Hi there. In this topic video, we're going to be looking at positive externalities. There are a number of instances and occasions when a market economy results in market failure. And this is when the price mechanism doesn't uh, lead to a socially efficient or optimal allocation of resources. There are loads of examples of market failure. And one of the key ones is when there are externalities, either in production or in consumption. And in this topic video, we'll focus on positive externality effects. So a positive externality occurs when production and or consumption of a good or service creates an external benefit on a third party that lies outside of the market transaction. So the positive externalities essentially create third party spillover benefits, external benefits. Uh, other people are affected in a positive way by the decisions of another agent in the market. The result is that the social benefit of production or the social benefit of consumption will be higher than the narrow private benefit. Now, those external benefits can come in different ways. They might be in a form of uh, a lower cost to a third party. It could be an increased revenue and profitability for another party. Or more generally, a sort of increased utility, satisfaction and welfare for the third party affected. We normally associate positive externalities with the consumption of merit goods and services. And we've got a separate topic video on merit goods. Just search the YouTube channel for that. But remember that as with the negative externalities as a cause of market failure, that any discussion of what actually counts as a positive externality and crucially how much we value the external benefits always involves making some kind of value judgment. And normative economics is, is never far away. A really key point before we go any further is that for various goods, depending on one's cultural and social norms and attitudes, uh, goods such as contraception, goods such as uh, services such as abortion, it's not always clear whether the externality is positive or negative. Value judgments are significant. And in many cases, we may, may not be able to put a, a price, a value on, uh, on these things. Let's make a distinction between positive production externalities, positive consumption externalities. So positive production externalities is when the act of supplying a good or service uh, generates a, a positive spillover effect to third parties. So, for example, the government might spend money supplying, producing some flood defence projects. And effective flood defence can benefit a much wider community than just the narrow community along a riverbank, for example, or another tributary. Uh, positive production externalities could involve uh, decisions, effective decisions to reduce the rate of deforestation in developing countries, which of course has a wider public public good globally, one could say. Uh, the supply of an app that promotes the sharing of scarce resources such as cars and increasing the utilisation of, of freight and lorries on the roads, that can have a wider benefit in terms of reducing emissions and making more efficient use of road space. Research and development spending by businesses can have important spillovers, particularly when there are significant knowledge transfers. And a lovely example is the idea of beekeepers uh, pollinating, uh, beekeepers keeping a, a hive of bees. Of course, that has much bigger, wider, positive benefits in terms of pollination of crops. Positive production externalities. Consumption externalities refers to the things that we buy and sell and consume as a, as, as a consumer. So, for example, if we uh, if we if if the take up rate on immunisations is sufficiently high, then you can develop herd immunity for the whole community. Uh, there are positive externalities from people consuming education, from taking courses, uh, both uh, life skills, work skills courses, as well as more academic qualifications. Gardeners may uh, grow beautiful gardens that other people can benefit from, and they may be successful in controlling pests. Uh, people who choose to use mass transport may actually be creating external benefits because they're leading to less road congestion. And one can argue there are social external benefits from the consumption of youth clubs, evening activities, apprenticeship schemes and internships, what have you, that get people actively involved in the labour market. So how do we show positive externalities diagrammatically? We start off by thinking about the narrow private costs and benefits of a consumption decision. So this whatever could be a, a consumption choice that a consumer might make. The optimal point is where the private marginal benefit equals the private marginal cost. 
However, with positive externalities, there are also some external benefits to consider. The marginal social benefit lies above the marginal private benefit. And the vertical distance between MPB and MSB shows the external benefit at output Q1. Now, ideally, if we were to take into account the positive externalities, we'd have a higher output level Q2. The price would be higher, that we value these things more highly. So the output Q2 is higher than Q1. Therefore, if we don't take into account the externalities, there is a danger of a market failure. Indeed, the net deadweight loss of welfare, social welfare, is shown by the green shaded triangle in our diagram. This is because output Q1 lies below the optimal level of consumption from a society point of view. Key point, if the market ignores positive externalities, there will be under consumption of the good or the service, and that leads to a market failure. So what can we do to encourage people to consume more merit goods? Well, the obvious approach, and of course you'll be able to evaluate this, is to offer a subsidy. We know that Q2 is the optimum level of consumption from society's point of view, and at Q2 the external benefit is the vertical distance between the MPB and the MSB curve. So what can we do? Can we what, what can we do to get consumption to expand to Q2? Well, we need to move down the consumer's demand curve. That's the key. So we need to get the price down to P2 to encourage consumers to move down their demand curve to an output level Q2. Well, the obvious approach to that is to offer a subsidy, perhaps a direct subsidy to the consumer. A subsidy to the consumer would reduce the private cost of consumption to the consumer, and the extent of the subsidy is shown by the vertical distance between the two cost curves there, the marginal private cost curves. Now that subsidy, in theory, would encourage consumption to expand to Q2, and we reach an optimum level of consumption from society's point of view. But keep in mind that subsidies themselves don't come cost-free. There are clearly opportunity costs in doing this. The key thing, I think, a little bit is the coefficient of price elasticity, that the elasticity of demand would determine, for example, how big a subsidy we have to offer to achieve a given change in consumption and moving towards output Q2. Here's an example where we put together two aspects. Uh, Quite a complicated diagram, but basically that we're assuming there's some positive externalities from consumption, let's say, but some negative externalities from production. So in this example, the marginal social benefit lies above the marginal private benefit, but the marginal social cost lies above the private cost. In that example, if we think about the, the, the positive and the negative ex, external, uh, externalities, the social optimum output is probably just a little bit to the left of the private optimum, which is Q1. So, for example, there are positive externalities from consumption, but there could be some significant pollution effects in supplying the good or service. A good example, finally, of positive externalities, I think, is, is library provision. There's a huge debate at the moment about local authorities, uh, obviously facing budget cuts, deciding to close their public libraries. And indeed, library usage in the UK has fallen quite sharply um, in 2013. Only about one third of people in England visited the library. That was down from a half in 2005. Um, and there's been a significant, although more than 5 million visits a week are made to the public libraries, that's, that's well down on 7 million visits a week just 10 years ago. Now, clearly, there are social benefits. There must be external benefits from having public libraries. I, mean, I, I myself, thinking back, I wouldn't be the person I am. So they say, if I hadn't had libraries, I'd go to a library every single day at school and when I'm in different towns and cities. There are clearly external benefits. They provide a community hub. They address issues of social isolation, for example. They give access, often free information on the internet, to people looking for advice and, and, and knowledge about the local area. Searching for jobs. It's a, it's a space where people can meet and ideas can be, uh, can be mingled. Uh, people can mingle and ideas can be discussed. So libraries are important. However, we know that libraries are falling in usage. Ebooks taking the place of, of hard, hard copies. Uh, supermarkets selling paperbacks extremely cheaply. The, the perception that libraries are stuffy and sort of out-of-date out of places where you know, being quiet is the order of the day, as allied to the fact that local authority funding is being cut. 
Now, many libraries are reinventing themselves and becoming community hubs operated and run by dynamic volunteers. Uh, so they have to become more dynamically efficient in order to survive and prosper. But I think the library issue is a good example of positive externalities from consumption and the importance of how we measure and value external benefits in local contexts. Okay, so we've taken you through in this study video some aspects of positive externalities. It's a key cause of market failure. And uh, I would link this topic video with the economics of merit goods and the analysis and evaluation of government subsidy, for example. Thanks for joining in, everybody. See you again soon.